Welcome back. So today I'm going to be looking at how a phase lock loop works and I'm going to implement a phase lock loop on a Rio, in particular a my Rio, which is a sort of student version. Uh, it's fairly new, came out in uh, 2013. So what is a phase lock loop? A phase lock loop is a little control system designed about the 1920s, I believe, by a Frenchman and in it, it's got these component parts. It's got applications in areas in wireless, for example. Uh, one of the most commonest uh, applications is demodulating frequency modulation, or FM modulation, as it's commonly known. Um, so I'll be doing that as well as part of this uh, demonstration, just a little bit. My application isn't very high frequency because my A to D doesn't work that high and the application I've got, which I'm not going to, it doesn't actually require a very high frequency. It's more about stability and uh, you know, than anything else. So looking at the phase lock loop, it's got a phase detector, that's PD, that's the bit down here, and then it's got a filter, and VCO stands for Voltage Controlled Oscillator. Instead of FM, if you just consider a sine wave going in here, where it says FM, then uh, the free running frequency must be set up for that nominal frequency that's going in here. So, for example, if this was a kilohertz going in here, this would have to be a kilohertz at the free running frequency. If this was 10 megahertz, then the free running frequency is 10 megahertz, and so on. Now, the VCO uh, normally in analog and digital uh, phase lock loops on integrated circuits is a square wave, gives you a square wave out. The uh, reason being there's a filter within this loop and that filters out any high frequency components, the higher order harmonics. So it doesn't make a hell of a lot of difference really if you have a square wave for the VCO versus a pure sine wave. Well actually the pure sine wave would be better because there's no higher order har harmonics, but normally it's impractical to make a good sine wave VCO. It's just very difficult to do so and expensive. So, uh, in, but however, in the way that I'm going to do it, it's done in software, which is in turn becomes hardware in terms of FPGAs. Then it's particularly easy to do it. So I might as well just use a sine wave. So the phase detector is just a pure multiplier. A filter, in this case, it can be something sophisticated like lag lead compensators and so on, but in my control loop, which I'll talk about in a minute, it's just going to be a low pass filter. And my VCO will just be a sine wave generator that's affected by a voltage that comes in here. Because it's digital, people might call it a numerically controlled oscillator than a voltage controlled oscillator, but Mine does actually come from a voltage, I suppose, so I can still call it a VCO, but it could be NCO if you prefer. And the point about the multiplier, if I go down here, is that if you multiply two cosine waves together, two sines as well, there's a trigonometric identity where you get half cost the sum plus a half cost the difference. And you'll notice if one of them is... Uh, separate it by 90 degrees, that's the VCO output, then uh, you get this equation down here which is, uh, if you ignore the sine which is just scaling, you get, uh, sorry, the 0.5 which is just scaling, you get sine of phi in minus phi out, that's the phase difference, plus cosine of a t twice the frequency term of the carrier um, term. Now that bit gets here, gets in the right hand side, gets filtered out, and it leaves us with the sine of phi in minus phi out. Now, sine x is approximately equal to x for very small phase changes, so that's like a difference. Okay, that's like a, a summing junction, in other words. We go back to the uh, loop itself. Um, and what it means is that in lock, the VCO output is 90 degrees lagging behind the the input signal at all times. Even though this is FM, this still lags continuously. So even though the frequency is varying, this will track it and uh, be 90. So it has to be a 90 degrees phase shift for this to work. Now if we go back down now and 
we can linearize the equations and we end up with this kind of um, thing which you'll see in all the textbooks for our phase lock loop. So we've put a linear phase is the input, phase is the output here. The VCO turns out, you see the free running frequency isn't there anymore but it's sort of part of here, but the VCO can be modelled as an integrator with a, some kind of gain. Usually the gain changes as you change the um, setup, fre the free running frequency uh, in, in a chip, in an in a integrated circuit version. And the filter here is just going to be a low pass filter for my application. Okay, so, and you can demodulate the FM. If you put FM in here, then the demodulated signal comes out of the filter, but I won't always be looking at that. So my program itself is uh, done on a compact reel, a my reel rather. Now the my reel is here. This is the my reel that you can get from uh, quite cheap for students at least. Um, it's got a whole load of A to D's, D to E's, and so on. And I'm feeding it from a function generator. I said before my carrier frequency is very small. In fact, it's 400. 400 hertz, in fact, and I've got an oscilloscope over here which is going to display things. I've got a second function generator, I'll talk about that later, that's if I want FM, but the first to begin with I'm just going to put a pure sine wave in and get it to lock. Now if we go and look at the project setup of the um, my Rio, you can see there's my VI, it's under the FPGA part. Uh, I don't have any uh, processor work here, it's just the FPGA, 40 megahertz clock. Here are the connectors, I mean I can use any, I can pull across any connector, for example, analog input zero, I could just drag that onto the uh, in lab view and uh, that becomes an um, input. So the actual program itself is here. and. Uh, perhaps difficult to see altogether. It's not very complicated by any means. This uh, this is the clock frequency, 40 megahertz, and this VI comes with the library of uh, LabVIEW from National Instruments, and this sets up my sine wave, and I, I could make it a square wave if I wanted to for the VCO, and uh, there's a plus term here which is the input to the VCO, that's just the free running frequency which I set up to, in this case, 400 hertz, but can be anything I want it to be, really. But I am limited by the um, ultimate sampling rate. This whole thing is in an infinite loop, or while loop, and uh, this thing here is the sequence. This thing that looks like a film strip around it is a sequence, which means it does this bit first, followed by that bit, and then goes back and does this again. And this bit is just a delay, of uh, 100 kilohertz, you can work out what that is, uh, 10 microseconds, I think it is. Uh, so that creates the sampling rate for my application. And then here, VCO, this is the phase detector, it's just simply a multiplier, nothing else. I've got a filter down here, which is again comes from the library, which is a Butterworth filter. Uh, although it's first order doesn't really mean much, although it's got a flat passband. Uh, these are the connectors, uh, first one output there, which is the, um, that's the uh, phase detector output. This one is a, an input, which is the main input of the FM, and this one is the filter, sorry, that one's the filter output here. This one's the VCO output, yeah, that one's the VCO output at that point. So I've got the VCO output, the filter output, and the input which itself, which is a sine wave. These bits here are just scaling. Uh, because the input, uh, it's integers and it comes in, you know, not to 16,000 or whatever, I have to scale it down, otherwise I get huge numbers. So I scale it down by a factor of 2 to the minus n, where n I fiddle with. So the, num the numbers become, you know, between, you know, something reasonable, you know, less than like 1 or 2 or something. So I'm not dealing with hundreds of thousands. And then uh, when I put it out again, I sort of scale it back up, convert it back to integer, and shove it back out in the D to A converters here. Okay. So let's uh, just 
just run it. There's a front panel, and uh, there's a free running frequency, 400 hertz, and these are just scaling things. I've got a control on the loop gain, which I found a bit of trial and error. I'll talk about that in a minute, the gain. Let's run it. It's been compiled before. So we go back to the oscilloscope, and on the oscilloscope there's two waveforms, one which is the uh, blue one, which is the input that's coming from here, 400 hertz, and the other one, the yellow one, is lagging by 90 degrees. You can check that and you'll see it's actually 90 degrees, and that's the VCO output, so it's showing it's locked. Now I can play around with this setting and move it and it should track but you can see it's losing its lock there, so it's now out of lock. I'll move it back up and it's jumped back into lock again. As I go higher, it eventually goes out of lock at the other end. Uh, I'm actually twiddling the frequency here, so going back to 400. I'll try and get it as close as I can to 400 because that's my setup frequency. Clearly, I can make that anything I really want to make it. So this can be scaled up for just about anything, but it's just the principle. So I've set it for pretty close to 400 now. And what I'm going to do now is put FM into it. And that just means taking a, sec a second uh, uh, function generator, let's say a sine wave or a square wave or whatever, sine wave to begin with, and putting it into the sweep input of the first, my carrier. That gives me FM. And there you can see it wobbling around, that means it's FM. If I increase the modulation depth, you can see it tracking. Eventually it'll break up. I think that's it. If I go too far. Okay, now what I'll do... So that's actually the FM, that's the um, uh, thing working beautifully. It's not got an enormous bandwidth. We'll talk about that again in a minute. Uh, but I can demodulate that baseband signal that I've just put in. If I take the output here, uh, instead of the VCO, if I connect it to the filter output, which is this guy here, and fiddle about with the scope. This is fiddly. Right. It's um, going to take a second, so I'll just set this up. So my baseband is set, it's just 5 hertz, and here's the filter output, it uh, breaks up there, there's it back again. It's not really intended for FM this one because it's got such a very low bandwidth, but just to show the principle, um, I'll just change the, change it down, oh it's triggering, yeah okay, I'll, there it goes. It's dropping down as you'd expect because it's running out of bandwidth. The bottom scale here is the FM itself. Of course, it's some. Um, there should be no amplitude variations because it's not going through any filters or anything. Uh, I'll put a uh, triangular wave on. Oops, it's. Uh, there we go. Put it up. It's beginning to distort a bit because it's running out of um, bandwidth again. But there's a demodulating a triangular wave. I can go down in frequency so that it's a bit more linear. Okay, so there it is demodulating that. I'll just demodulate a square wave. It's, it's breaking up. There we go. So it's nicely damped. Uh, that's a quite a big phase margin. There's no overshoot. I mean, I can play with the gain in a minute, and I'll show you it becomes has overshoot if I increase the gain. Let's have a quick look at the board plot over on the whiteboard. And you can see we've got the VCO itself. The VCO is uh, an integrator. And the open loop board plot's got a slope of minus 20 dB per decade, followed by the filter, which cuts off, in my case, at 40 Hz. I set it at 40 Hz. And so, the worst case scenario when the gain is reasonably high, 
um, those two combine and you get a phase characteristic starts at minus 90 goes down to minus 180 depending on where it crosses the 0 dB is the unity gain frequency and it could be something like 45 degrees maybe if the gain is on the high side or it could be very very little it could be 90 degrees if the gain is very very low so it's important to draw your board plot to see what's going on um, that, or do it in your head if you know what you're doing um, of course we can get fancy we could put another integrator in at low frequencies and take it out again and that would give you uh, better tracking at very low frequencies uh, but that's a little bit more advanced there you need to do a little bit more fancy programming um, if I go back to the VI I can um, alter the gain well, let's move the gain up to something like uh, 0.3 so it's quite big now and uh, now you see there's a going back here you see all the what's happened here is the 2F carrier feed through now is getting through because the gain's very very big so the filter isn't doing its job anymore because it's uh, because of a large gain if I reduce the gain then there's more filtering action so so there we have it that's um, FPGA uh, based uh, phase lock loop that's the basic idea if you didn't follow it the first time, here's the diagram again the um, FPGA code is a phase detector and here's the um, VCO it then gets filtered and fed back into the VCO, the filter output goes back into the input of the VCO there's a free running frequency which is 400 Hz and various gains that's it